for this meeting, the first day of the meeting, um, the appointed time before the Lord. We appreciate God in this church, appreciate God for the ministers, this family, a very powerful family, family filled with love, with awesome people. I praise God for your life. God continue to be with you in Jesus' name. I bring you greetings from our country, our country we are one from Nigeria. I bring you greetings from my church, um, Faith in Christ Mission, um, Bragada. We also have a fellowship called Fire It Off My Head, the Transformers Place. Uh, we bring you greetings from them. They said to me in Nigeria, this meeting in Calgary, um, these people are special people. You left everything to come to them. So we, we thank the Lord for your life. God continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Um, this today, the first day of the meeting, I was speaking about um, the appointed time. I take the traits of the appointed time, speak for some few minutes, and we're going to powerful prayers. I take it from the angle of telling us what appointed means. I go to the next one, talking about what you do to enter into your appointed time. And number three, the traits of the appointed time. I want you to listen to me, because as I go on, there will be a time we're going to be praying. I'm a minister, and then we do a lot of prayers and deliverance. We also preach the word. I think what I'm doing today, I do this in a week, seven places. I, I minister seven times in a week. Um, I minister in the church on Sunday. I minister on Tuesday in the same time of Pebby. If you know Pebby in Nikaja, I minister in Bagada on Wednesday. Thursday, I'm in VI. Friday, I'm in Kodu. If you know Kodu, I'm fr um, Friday, I'm in Unilag. Saturday, I'm in Lekki. Sunday, I'm back in the church. Now, this, this ministrations we do, we ask the Lord what we will say there. So I ask the Lord what, would I, what I will say here this um, evening. So what I was saying here today will differ from what I will say tomorrow and the one we'll say on Sunday. Now the Lord said to me, first and foremost, as we go into the world of God, prepare your minds tomorrow when we're coming. You see, you cannot start something that you will not finish. So tomorrow will be awesome. Tomorrow God said to me, bring the seven most wanted things to the Lord. The seven most wanted things, you bring them to the Lord tomorrow evening. As we're going to, because God has the reason for this meeting. I was here in Calgary, um, sorry, last year in February. I never knew I would be here again this year. We changed. We moved it. We moved it over time. So I believe this is an appointed time for us in Jesus' name. First of all, when something is appointed, I said when it's appointed means it is scheduled. It is fixed. When it's appointed, it is what? It's scheduled. It is what? Fixed. It means when you say something is appointed, it means it has been timed or scheduled or fixed for that time. So we know that the timing we're discussing this evening has been scheduled or fixed by the Lord. And then when we say appointed time, from the Lord's angle, it means the Lord controls. He does what? He controls it. He has fixed it. Yeah, he has fixed it. Thank you very much. He has fixed it. Thank you so much, my friend. Yeah. He has fixed it. I'm, I'm going to give you a, a prize for, for what you just did now, my good friend. I'm going to give you a prize. Um, I, don't, I don't have your currency here, but I'm, I'm going to try and get your currency and give you a very huge prize. What's your name? Tobani. Tobani. Yeah, that's powerful. Tobani. That's what I have a prize for you. God continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Now, when something is fixed, it is scheduled by the Lord. It means the appointed time cannot be controlled by men. When it comes to the word of God, it cannot be controlled by men. So in the Bible, we have in Genesis 21, verse 1. Genesis 21, verse 1 talks about, And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has promised. We're going to read that passage very soon. Genesis 21, verse 1. In all the versions, the King James, New Living Standard, um, today's English, um, whatever standard you have, and the New Standard, everything said, the Lord did unto say as he has promised, as he has said, and at the set time. So the set time there means the appointed time. In this passage, it means it was not controlled by men, but by God. Now, I go to the, uh, the first one I mentioned. I said, what do you do to arrive or to, you know, wait upon your appointed time? First thing, you seek the face of God. About the appointed time, you have to seek the face of God. Because you wouldn't know when it will come. So you go back to God and seek his face. Remember I said, we're going to speak for some females and we're going to pray for prayers. Number two, you walk with the Lord. You have to walk, um, I'm talking about W-A-L-K. You walk with the Lord. There will, be, there will be a kind of relationship within you and God. For every elevation, there must be a relationship. For every revelation, there must be a relationship. For every I mean, elevation, there must be a revelation. So you have to walk with the Lord. In your walk with the Lord... In your moving with the Lord, that's when you come to realize that my own time might differ from your own time. 
That's why people will come to the house of God and say, ah, Star, can me go the bridge to where is my own? Because you don't know your time. You have to learn to walk with God and seek God. And then the third one, you serve. Look for a way to serve the Lord in his vineyard. Just do something for him. Now, we'll go to the next one that talks about the attributes, the signs of the appointed time. How do you see them? How do they manifest? Number one, the appointed time always births a miracle. It gives birth to a miracle. Before, you see, when it happens, it will be sudden, but it will birth a miracle. In John 11, God bless the man of God that ministered here before me. Uh, right? Adewale. He mentioned John 11. He's a strong man. And John 11 was what the Lord said to me that, he, that, that was, you know, a miracle was given back to. John 11, 40 to 41. We saw that there, a miracle was given at the appointed time. Now, when you check the story of um, Lazarus, God didn't do anything till he died. You get it? He didn't do anything till the man died. The Bible said they went to call Christ. Because you are hearing this and you're saying, I've been praying. I've been married. I have no child. I have this one. I was sharing with my pastor. Uh, pastor Alabi, God bless him so much. Also a man of God. I told him I carried the pregnancy for 18 months. In the ministry, as a minister, preaching. In fact, ordained as a pastor, to go and pastor a church. With a pregnancy in me that wasn't growing, that kills people. They call it the ectopic pregnancy. And I entered the ministry with that pregnancy. And then, uh, you see, we should ask the Lord, what have we done? Who are the powers in charge? And my pastor then was, Nigeria was, was telling me, I, do you want to go? If you don't want to go, somebody else will go. He said, I said, sir, can you give me some time to go and pray? He said, no, pray here, pray now, pray over there. I said, sir, let me just tell my husband. He said, no, God didn't send me to your husband, he sent me to you. Meanwhile, he's the only one that knows I'm carrying a pregnancy which wasn't growing. It was actually growing outside my, my womb, which they call the atopic pregnancy. And then, why didn't I ask the Lord? Why didn't I ask him and say, how come? The pregnancy was there. The ministry started, the church started, this transformation place started. <laughs> I will carry the pregnancy and I told the Lord, I will preach the gospel every day and I will not die. I will go to church every day and you deliver me. And at the end of the 18 months, I delivered the bouncing baby girl. There was no surgery. There was no cesarean. There was nothing. And I'm telling you, God did wonders. You see, sometimes you ask yourself, some questions you should not ask yourself. He said, I know the end from the what? The beginning. He said, I'm the alpha and the omega. So sometimes when you're troubled, you leave it to God. Just go back to God about your life. Because at that time, we want to query God, but you know what? I now got my miracle, my ministry from that test, you know, from, that, from what I went to. Now, I, then the Lord said to me, you pray for women, pray for the fruit of the womb, pray for people because I've been there and I've been back. I've seen 14 years barrenness. I've seen 21 years barrenness. I've seen several. And I've had a ministry for women through that. What you're going to right now is going to take you to the next level in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, the world is ready to see the best of you. I'm telling you, the rest of you shall be the best of you in Jesus' name. Listen to me. Nobody here, Ella Kasorosha, listen, we live the way you came in Jesus' name. There will be transformation in life in Jesus' name. One man think is impossible in your life shall be possible in Jesus' name. You see, when you are going through things, you go back to your father. He is able to do all things. So I said, first year, he always births a miracle. So let's take a look at John, uh, sorry, um, John 11 now. John 11, 40 to 41, please. John 11, 40 to 41. Talks about how the miracle came. We will not take the whole of the passage. We take John 11, then we take Genesis 21, verse 1, please. Genesis 21, verse 1. Anyway, and lost, visited Sarah as he has said, and did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Can we go to the next? Uh, continue. He now said, and the Lord blessed Sarah in verse 2. He said, he gave her the child at the third time. The Sarah had the baby at the third time. So that means for everybody upon the earth, there's a what? There's a third time. And the time goes out. That was why. And he said, for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God has spoken to him. Now the set time there is the appointed time. Your own might differ from my own place. And the plans of God for you at that time might not be the same thing with me. So please, brethren, stop comparing yourself to other people. Ah, oh, we got married at the same time. Oh, hey, we came to Calgary at the same time. My first trip to England, when I got to England for the first time, um, the Lord said to me, can you go downstairs? The house, so I went downstairs. So I went there, and it was raining. 
And the Lord said to me, you stand outside here. I said, Lord, I was standing there. He said to me, you just stand somewhere, you know, beside the house where something can cover you. But stand there, I want to show you something. That was my first trip to England. And so suddenly somebody was coming and she was, uh, the lady was sharing some handbills, Nigerian. So she gave one to me. She just came to me straight off with a brolly on her head and gave me one. So I took it. So I said, thank you. She said, we're inviting you, ma. We're inviting you. Um, I, was in, I was in Dagna. She said, we're inviting you to, um, I want to remember now. We're inviting you to, um, um, whatever, uh, that, that's from, uh, in Deptford Bridge. You're going to come to the program. I said, I'll try. I said, open the program and the card. The name there was the Reverend Mizomoto Show. My auntie in Nigeria, who was asking, who was asking when she saw my husband and some people, and said, ah, who is him? Uh, uh, who is him? Uh, I was an evangelist there. Who is the evangelist Bumi? She said, she's there. Ah, oh, she's still there. I said, ah, for the past 15 years, 15 years, she trained us. When I came to that ministry, Transformers Facing Christ, she trained us. You know, she was so strong. This was one's fast 11 o'clock in the night. The prayer warriors, they are there. She's still there. She's still an evangelist, not yet a pastor. And that one said, ah, God will do it. She'll be there. That day, as she was speaking, she said it some months back. At that time in England, I had become a pastor. I had pastor in the church. And I traveled to England to minister. She also traveled to minister. You see? At the same time, we all got our breakthrough. She saw, she now, they now gave me a card of her ministry in England. I'm also in England ministering. And I'm also a pastor. She's also a pastor. You see? So, sometimes we will tell you, this thing is taking time. Your own set time might differ from my own set time. So sometimes if somebody is ahead of you and you are saying they've gotten the break to you work for your own time, God has sent me to you in Nateboruska. I wouldn't go for a meeting if God had not ordained it. If I was saying it, I've never gone for a trip that I'm going to take so many days. God said to me that this night, this day, and this week is your week in Jesus' name. And no power will stop you in the mighty name of Jesus' name. Now, when you check now in John 11, can we take John 11, 14, 41? There's always a miracle when you see the set time. You will not understand the mystery. Anytime you can understand God, that there's no miracle in place, please. Anytime you know everything. If you know God in and out, Deuteronomy 29, verse 29 says, the secret thing belongs to what? To God. About your job, about your matrimony, about your life. If you know God in totality, please, there, there's no miracle. There will definitely be no miracle when you know God in totality. In, in John 11, he said that, you see, there was a miracle. He was sick. He died. Christ did not get there. Even when they were asking him to come there, it was not other things. In your life, you had been calling in the castle Russia. And have you taken time? Because God has a better plan for your life. And that plan will manifest in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. No power to that plan in the mighty name of Lord today. And just said unto her, said unto you that if that will, believe, if that will see the glory of God, you see, it's, that's why the man of God said, it. you have to have faith. That was the glory of the Lord. Now said, then they took the, away the stone from the place where dead was laid. And just lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee. Blah, blah, blah. And he was praying. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible said, and he that was dead did what? Came forth. Listen to me. This same man that, did, that he did not heal. The same man that went to the clinic, he had issues. The same man that they called him, he was busy. The same man that he didn't get there on time. The same man that was friend. Some of you are here. I've been, I've been in Calgary. I had no job. I lost this one. I didn't get that one. The pregnancy did not come. Anytime I want to have a baby, there's a problem. That same you, in the best is coming for you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when the Lord does the usual things, people will not celebrate Christ. Let him do the unusual. When he does the unusual, people will know God is mighty. In my own case, when I tell the people, the day I came out to say, Thank the Lord for my life. My baby was being named. And I said, I carried this pregnancy for 18 months. Ha. Everybody was crying in the church. The only person I knew about this was myself, my husband, and my general was here. So we were saying, ha, ah, we have sinned. We have sinned, though. Because we will go to her and we'll tell her to pray for us. And she will pray for us. And she will not complain. We have sinned. Because I'm a slim person, so my tummy even for the, for the 18 months was not too big. And I was still wear my skirt suit. I put on my belt, my jacket. But you know what? I kept on walking for the Lord. So we were crying and saying, hey, it's a lie. They checked the baby. They checked the child. No deformity. Nothing. Brain was okay. Everything, everything, every feature was there. Even the doctor was saying, this baby that dodged. He said it in Yoruba, motor man dodge. He said the baby, we didn't see her for some time. We now saw her now. No, of all my children, of all the kids I have, the one that has the greatest glory, sings very well, has a, you see, so brilliant in school is that girl. 
Now you'll be asking, I mean, when the Lord saw me going through it, why didn't he come and help me? Lazarus died and he was buried. Even before they buried him, Christ did not get there. Some of you are here, you're saying something in the second time. Because it was not your time. Any you have lost was not your time. This is your time now. You're going to receive it in Jesus' name. Number two, you see, every time there's going to be an appointment, it changes your destiny. Remember we said the attributes, the traits. Number one, it will give back to a miracle. Number two, it will change your destiny. The appointment will change your name and your status. It will change your life. When it comes to your appointment time, everything about your life will change for better. People will look at you and say, how did you get the glory? They won't understand the mystery of God upon your life. And number three, it is unstoppable. When it's your appointed time, the glory cannot be stopped. No power can stop it. Massacre bush. You, you see, you, there's, there's some level that you say you have some dreams and then you pray. There's some level when the glory is coming. Nobody stops you. Nobody stops the glory from manifesting. It becomes unstoppable. Even some words spoken by people cannot stop it. There are some powers in the Ruska. When they fight you at a point and they lose the battle, they will not go far. And, and, and you see, sometimes when issues come, I remember some time ago in one of our videos in the church, we came out to minister like this in the night video, our annual night video of all our centers, compiling all our seven centers, our seven churches together. And Lord said to me, somebody you are here, they said you're not pregnant, but there's a baby in you there, and the baby is growing in you. That's the first word. As I came out like this, like the one that God gave me that everybody in this meeting today have a testimony. Yeah. God told me, in the table, everybody here have a testimony. Yeah. No power can block it. You see, and then you, you get ready. People asking you, how did you do it? How did it happen? I saw all of you wearing unusual jacket this evening. And I asked God told me, that's the jacket of honor and power. There will be, there'll be manifestations. You see, when this word came out, that your, your hair, a baby is going in you, and the baby in you will not be seen. The lady came out. Only one person came out. She came out. A very large crowd, or seven centers together, everywhere jam-packed with people. She came out. She stood there. She was an SS. SS don't get pregnant. They don't carry baby. They don't survive. Nobody knows. In Nigeria, our mother has a very big school, I think in Ogba area. Then she went back to her seat. Everybody was dancing around her. They were happy. Ah, that's you. It's for you. Her name is Omotara. Ah, Tara is for you. Do you know that? After that day, Tara went to the clinic. What was she told? But the doctor said, Why are you bothering yourself? There's no way you can never be pregnant, Tara. It's not, it's not, Madame, don't come in. In England, in America, said, you can never be pregnant to normal pregnancy. You are SS. You have complications. Even IVF cannot work for you. It was that bad. She told the doctor, I'm pregnant. At that time, you see her. She's long. She's this. Now, I I went to the Lecky Center. She comes to the Lecky Center. I went there, and we were counseling, and she said something to me. Anytime the devil tries to play pranks with people's destiny, I get so aggressive about it. She told me, Ma, I, I you have to pray for me, Ma. Uh, my mom, too, didn't have me for 10 years, and I'm the only child of my mother. I was already, and I stopped. I said, repeat what you have said again. I said, it will never happen in this fellowship, in this ministry. You will, not, you, will not be, you will not be barren for 10 years, and I reject. I come against. I can't, so I bring down everything from your mother's side in Jesus' name. And then we prayed. Do you know what? I went back to the clinic again. And then she went to buy baby things. As the Lord is leading me, she brought baby things. Six months, she went back again. No pregnancy was seen. Seven months. Only for them to see that it's seven months in England. When they now saw it, they said, okay, you now start the problem now. You are an excess. You have complications. There can be no normal delivery. Baby will be deformed. This disease will be there. She said, it's okay. Now, the thing was now growing. The other day, the doctor called her and said to her, are you okay, madam? She said, yes. Are you sure? She said, yes. In England, that one said, can you come to the clinic? Can you be coming now? He said, no, I don't. Said, Medically right now, on our record, you should be having crisis. You know how SS have their crisis. Pain, shouting. He said, I have no problem. He said, you should be coming. The guy called again. Early in the morning, are you okay? Somebody with you? And then mother said, I'm okay. Then she went to the clinic. The guy said, it's not possible. Medically by now, the baby you should be deformed. You also should have crisis. She carried the pregnancy for nine months. Then they saw that finally on the delivery day, ah, there'll be bleeding, there'll be issues. She didn't have strength. I didn't even know that Ota is SS. We never knew. On the delivery day, by herself, without anything, without any problem, she had the baby. When she came to Nigeria and 
and said she's an SS, that they had no problem, I was shocked myself. You see, when the Lord wants to bless you, in La Castle, at your appointed time, no power can stop him. No power stop that testimony. Our mother came to Lekki, shared it there. Came to VI, shared the testimony. Came to Wada, shared there. And you wouldn't believe it. Only child of our mother, husband too, only child of his mother. The two of them, people who are very funny, only child of their parents. And then the Lord did wonders in their life. Today, like every other parent to stop him shall be destroyed in Jesus' name. At your point in time, no power can stop. No power can go against the will of God in your life. It's not possible. But you know, as believers, there's some words of wisdom I want to give to you. But we're going to go into prayers. You see, number one, for you to be raised, for you to have a lift in life, you have to partake in the race of life. For your race, partake in the race. Like the pastor said, you can't fold your hands. It will be good. For your race, R-A-S-I-E, you partake in the race. R-A-C-E. They must, you see, you must take part in the race of life. You go into warfare prayers. You pray very well. You let the Lord know that you're, like he said to you, tired of what you're going through. You reject anything as negative. Number two, if you can dream the invisible, then you do the impossible. How do you dream the invisible? It goes back to your faith now. You're seeing something that people say is not possible. You dream the invisible. You see it coming. Like I was telling you, there's no ministry that will start, that will start, that will start big. It starts from somewhere. So you sit now here today, and then this church is like, does not matter. And some, some time, I was telling Pastor uh, Labi, I said there was time one of my secretary in the church was saying, he would say, praise the Lord. And he would say, yes, everybody in the overflow here, overflow B, when there's nobody there. Nobody's outside though. The thing is just empty. The guy would be shouting, overflow A, overflow B. And everybody was saying he's mad. It came to pass. That's seeing the invisible and then doing the impossible. You're here, you're praying. One of my ministers in Nigeria, she said, Pastor Imadi Alabi, she said, that's true, she's also Alabi, she said she would go and take clothes in the house and put it here. And when we say, Pele, Pele, and they would do that one in the house because they were not having a time. So said they would do it in the morning. Ah, Pele, eh, Pele, and then she would put it there. When somebody's coming, they, they would remove it though. When the person goes back, they go and put it again. Ah, Pele, hey, the trees are bothering you. Ah, Pele, they did it in faith and it came to pass. It came to pass. She actually still carried the word, the baby. Uh, and then God told me, He said, Look at me, I want to give you a car. You are asking for a car? You go and price a car. Hmm. And you know me, a very funny person. Hmm. So I asked my husband to see me, you know, when to, just see me off when there. Oh, God, there. I looked at the cars. I went to CFO, one of those have brand new cars. So I got there. I saw this very fine Jeep. That's the first one I saw. So I looked at the jeep and I entered. So I sat down there. And I asked them for the performing invoice. I'll back. They said, ah, when are you coming back? I said, I'll be back. In a week, you know, I'll be back. So I sat down in the car. The man was a very funny man. He said, ah, uh -uh, I should come down. Let me also sit down. He sat down there. <laughs> then the next thing, there was one small car. One small, one small coat. You know, then I showed I said, me, enter this one. I bind that spirit. And I bah, this jeep. I've sat down there. The heavenly was, I'm taking my photograph. Ah, I said this is 3.2 million, 3.2. My mom was pinching the people, look boom me, pastor boom me. I said, ah, leave this. Oh, when I when are you coming back? I said, I'll be, I'll be back. I said it with my voice. I took it. I went back and I said, Lord, this is the jeep for me. Then I left the place. He was laughing at me. I said, ah, who tell wah, kikire, 3.2 million. You, you get the money for. I said, ah, you know, he said even in your bag now. Bring that money for taxi. You have only 500 naira. I told him, are you not human? I said, you want to destroy my faith to sit down in this small car after sitting down in the jeep, and then heaven knows will see me there again. Never. This is where I'm going to sit down. Then I left. You don't believe it. I stand before the Lord today. Some people came together, they wanted to get me a car. They went to um, Volkswagen, they wanted to get a Skoda or something, whatever. They didn't get Then one girl said, I know somewhere in Ikeja, let's go to Luwale. Uh -huh. Then they went there. Then they met the girl, the girl's name is Uju, the girl that spoke to me. They met the girl. The moment they came, they said, ah, this guy is for our, for our pastor. We like this jeep for her. Let's go and bring her. Then they brought me there. I think a month after, when I got there, you know what the girl said when she saw me? Mommy, you're back. Oh, that's far from you. You know, I don't know about this arrangement. So. She said, you're back. I said, yes. I said, ah, there's a problem. Oh, these people want to buy the cow. And I said, it's for you. I don't want to buy it too. And they were saying, do you know her? Ha? She said she was there. Ah, they said, we didn't know. They both had their own performer invoice. My own was the same thing. 
And I told my husband, didn't I tell you? If you see the invincible, you do the impossible. And I got the car. That same car, I got it. I, I, I couldn't believe it myself. They took me there, I went there, and that was the same car they bought for me. Somebody you are here this evening, as you into this testimony, that impossible thing, that impossible glory in your life shall manifest in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Is there anything people say is not possible? You see it coming to manifest. We're going to be praying very soon. When you see the invisible, then you can do the impossible. You can do it. And then number three, you mold your world with your words. Mold your destiny with the words of your mouth. I can make it. It's my time. It's my period. I'm getting the glory. I'm getting the job. Uh, Esther, like they read this evening, Esther, a foreigner, becoming a queen. Yeah. And who told you that this place is in a Kasorosha? Not for you. The Bible says the acts is of the law and the fullness thereof. You can do all things in a Teboruska. It doesn't matter. Is that lift of your heads or your gates? Ah, and you believe you have a lasting doors. It means the doors in Calgary can open for you. Can open for you in Nigeria. Can open for you anywhere. Anywhere you get to, it belongs to your father. Who told you are no more than this? In Ruska. I don't care how much you are being paid. I see you getting something bigger in Jesus' name. I see you getting higher in Jesus' name. I don't know what you have had in life before. Can I, can I get glory? Something might as well come in Jesus' name. I told the pastor, at the time of my life, I sleep on the floor in the church. With my children, my three kids on the floor, we had no house, we had no prayer to, and we are ministers. When we preach, when we pray for people, glory manifests. We had nothing to eat, but one time came, the glorious moment came, appointed and came. Then we left that place. I said one day I was ministering on the altar like this, and my dress, given to me by my mom, was torn on the shoulders, and I'm facing a church bigger than this. They also said to me, "Go and speak for five minutes each day for three weeks, for three days." And my dress was thrown on the shoulders. They called me. Yes, seven years look at me. The pastor is calling you to the, to the altar. You're to minister for five minutes. I said, ah, eh? no, look at my dress. And they said, well, we're going to call you again. If you don't come out now, it's up to you. The heavens have sent you. Then I came out. I have a sister in America. The moment I came out like this, they were, they were texting her. Ah, what want here? Your stay is in Nigeria. Our clothes are torn. And I was ministering. People were shedding tears. were praying. And my clothes, the Ankara I was wearing, was given to me by my mom. I had no money. And I was ministering on the, on the, on the altar with a torn dress on the shoulder. Ah, uh, but the same me, when the time came, came back on that altar. I can't even remember my clothes and the dry cleaners now. But that time, I had nothing to, you know, to wear on a, on a Sunday service, wearing a ton dress, had no money. Somebody you are here today, I don't know how you woke up this morning, in or your bank account, this week, this month, the Lord will change your life in Jesus' name. I don't care what I told you, it's not possible. This is your time, your moment, your season. I left that place, went to the house, had cars, I... I the time in my compound, the landlord was asking me, are you still the owner of this car? Are you let me motor you? The first one was packed, second one was packed, the third one was packed. We that we had no house, we had no life. I was telling Pastor Labi that my house, the one I lived in at that time, we entered the house, we sat on the floor. No curtains, no chair, nothing. But suddenly everything came. Today, I decree into your life. Here in Calgary, anywhere in the world, Matiburuska, on that glory, shall locate you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There will be a great lifting for you. We're going to pray right now. You're going to say, Oh my Father, I want you to rise upon your feet. Pray this prayer with the whole of your strength. That God has entered my time. You see, when we pray in the church, we have to pray believing God for the miracle. I don't know how you guys pray in Calgary, but pray that God should manifest his glory. Pray with the whole of your strength. In, there's no point in being believers when we're not receivers. If you are believers, we should be receivers. That Lord manifests your glory upon my life. God is still in the of doing wonders. In Nateboruska, he does wonders. He does miracles of the time. You see, in the church one day, they brought a boy. A boy of around six years old. He doesn't speak. He doesn't stand. You can't put the boy's leg on the floor. It's to go to India, and they had no money. When they brought the boy like this, listen to me. Put the boy's leg down. They put the boy down. Head deformed. And they listen to me. Pray, and then hug the boy or something. I think we prayed. And then they left. The man said, even that India haven't gotten the money. In a service on a Wednesday morning, 10 to 12, they brought the boy, and that was all. Then we had a service. That's why it's very, what pastor, I think it's a pastor too, Pastor Lawa, I would say, he said, he said he went to a meeting, they told him something, announcement, and the glory came. That day God said to me in the service, after that boy had gone to, God said to me, there's a boy, sick, cannot walk, they should go and touch the boy now. Put the hands on the boy, within now, some days, the boy will walk again. 
But in that meeting, the mother was not there. Who was there? It was a mother's senior sister. That one came for the anointing. Are you hearing me? On a Wednesday morning, did not see the mother of the boy on Thursday. Did not see her on Friday. Saw her on Saturday morning. Please, I ask you, the hands of the anointing, are they still there or they are dry? Eh? And physically, are they still there? Is the oil still there physically? But spiritually, it is there. By the time they saw, you see, that's how you have to act on faith. As she saw, he said, ah, you didn't come to faith. They made sure that your media's name. I your media cannot walk. Please, where is your hand? Then they put their hands together. They were sisters. And then the next, that, that very day, that one went home and put their hands on her son's head. And your media now got up and started working. You see, when they brought the boy to the service the next Wednesday, and I saw the boy coming like this. Anytime I see a miracle, I'm on, my, I'm on the floor of my father. People were crying because I saw the boy. He has a very big head. And her middle was walking. The head too was going, was shrinking. The boy walked again. The woman could not believe it. You see? It, I've seen diverse glory from the Lord in Nateboruska, in my years in the ministry, 27 years now. I've seen diverse miracles. God told me in Calgary, in La Casa Rocha, this year, in this meeting, we manifest the Lord in Jesus' name. I want you to be open your feet. Say, oh, my father. 